mercy that is ever present in our lives. Um, thank you for all of you that came back out on this afternoon. As already been stated, we had a wonderful worship service on this morning. We thank God for those visitors that we had. And it's just so good to see people you've never seen before um, come in to worship. And we pray up. Pray that something was said and done throughout our service that would prick their heart, that would make them want to come back and know what it is that they need to do to have their soul saved. We're thankful for those of you that are watching us via live stream. We thank God for you. Um, as always, you could have stopped by anywhere you wanted, but we're glad that you stopped by to be with here um, with us on this afternoon. Um, we'll be going to um, Exodus chapter 23, as has already been uh, stated, um, verses 1 and 2 for our consideration on this evening. I pray that y'all keep the missus in your prayer. She's feeling a little on the weather um, at this moment. Um, the man kicking up her butt at the time, I guess. So, uh, she, uh, she, we got, we got eight more weeks, and he'll be making his grand arrival. So, uh, uh, pray that you pray for her that um, she'll be good um, and whatnot. I also had a request that was given to me. I don't get many of them, you know. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't get many requests for a song. So, I, I'm gonna need you to help me out if you can. If, if, if you can, all right. Okay. I have sinned against you, Lord. I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I move my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bending knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus. I am try me one more time. Well, I have sinned against you, Lord. I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bending knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus. I am trying me one more time. Savior, who forgive us of all of our sins. It's so good to know He'll forgive us over and over and over again. Lord, to sin, it is human, but to forgive is so divine. If you just say, please forgive me, Jesus, and try me one more time. Well, I have seen against you, Lord. Lord, I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bending knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. So, please forgive me, Jesus. I am trying me one more time. Jesus, Lord, I thought I was having fun, but you allowed me to come to myself, Lord, and now I'm on the run. Please make me a half servant. I'm not worthy to be called your child. But if you just say, please forgive me, Jesus, I am trying to be one more time. Well, I have sinned against you, Lord. Lord, I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bending knee, begging you to save me, soul of mine. If you just say, please forgive me, Jesus. Exodus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. Um, the Bible says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Tonight we are continuing our, uh, continuing our studies in the book of Exodus, tonight in the, in the ch chapter number 23. 
And in this chapter, God continues to give more instructions that the children of Israel had to obey. You remember last week that we were with the children of Israel as God had delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. God had brought them through the Red Sea and God had brought them out on the other side unscathed and untouched. And now God has brought them to a place. God said, you know what? Now I have delivered you. Now that I have brought you all out. Now that I have answered this prayer that you all have been crying out for all of these years. Now I want to teach you how to be obedient. Apparently God knew that we as children and his children can get a little wayward sometimes. So he had to teach these people how to be obedient. Now the first verse that we get in the A clause it says, you shall not circulate a false report. That's powerful right there, ain't it? You shall not circulate a false report. Now, this verse could cover two sins. The first one would be lying. Um, lying has never been tolerated by God, no matter which covenant you're on. If you're on the old covenant, it's wrong. You're on the new covenant, it's wrong. It don't matter. So, the second one, sin, would be gossiping. It's bad enough to lie, but to gossip about a lie is getting pretty low. God did not want such thing happening to the children of Israel because God knows what kinds of problems and divisions can occur when people lie and gossip at the same time. And we got to be careful in this day that we are careful that we don't find ourselves guilty of circulating false reports. Amen. Yes. If you didn't see it, it may be a false report. Amen. Uh, just because you heard something does not mean that it's actually factual. So we need to make sure that we are not circulating false reports because if we do that, what does it become? It becomes sin for us. And not only can it, can it do that, but it can also cause innocent people to get hurt in the mix of what it is. And it can also divide a relationship even with your brothers and sisters. Verse number two, he says, you shall not follow a crowd to do evil. It's one thing to do evil on your own, but you know what? Don't follow a crowd to do evil. Now, this all has to do with something that we call peer pressure. We've all heard that word before. Now, this is usually associated with younger people, with teenagers. But if you be real with yourself, it can happen to adults as well. Now, all it takes is a few strong-willed people to start a group that can eventually turn it into something that like an out of control mob that would do evil things that they normally would not do. And I can't help but to think of the crowd that got stirred up by the Pharisees as Jesus stood before Pilate and how they joined together and fought to have Jesus crucified. And, and so the command here is great advice not to follow a bunch of people to do evil. And especially in this day and time, you ought to be your own individual. You ought to be your own person. You ought to think for yourself. You ought to make decisions for yourself. Even when it comes to the word of God, you know, you got to save yourself. Amen. I can preach to you, but I can't save you. I can give you advice, but I can't say it's up to each and every single individual to save them what? Selves from this untoward generation. So the Bible, um, he says in Exodus, the same chapter, verse number eight, he says, and you shall take no bride for a bride blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. Now, this was great advice for them back then, and it's certainly good advice for people today. Now, to many people, especially uh, what we call those politicians, they compromise their own beliefs for bribes that they are given to. Now, Exodus chapter 23, verse number 10 and 11, it says, Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce, but in the eleven years you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they lead, the beasts of the field may eat. In like manner, you shall do in your vineyard and also your olive grove. Now, this is similar to the weekly Sabbath, as to where they were to work six days, and then on the seventh day they were to rest, but this was a yearly event. Six years they were to sow in the ground, gather the produce, and then they would leave it alone for another year. Now, whatever comes up on its own that year will go to the poor or to the animals of the field, and this command would have to be obeyed with their faith and trust in God, knowing that he would provide for them in the year that they took off. So uh, Leviticus chapter 25, 
verses 20 and 21 says, And if you say, What shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow or gather or any produce, then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce even for three years. Can I tell y'all, if you follow God and you do what it is that God has called for you to do, God will always make sure that even in a famine time, God will make sure that you as his child have what you need to survive. I never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Look at somebody and say God is a provider. Now Exodus chapter now if they would have obeyed God's commands he would take care of them by giving them church enough harvest to last for three years on that sixth year of their crops. Now, the great lesson that we can learn from this is that even though you may not understand why God wants us to do certain things a certain way, we just need to trust him and know that he will provide for us just like he did for the children of Israel. Now, in Exodus chapters 23, verse 14 through 19, we find the children of Israel were to have three feasts throughout the year and every male was to attend. Now, the first feast was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or what we also know as the Passover. And as we all know, this feast was a yearly remembrance of how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. And they were to eat unleavened bread for seven days during the month of what they call a bill, A-B-I-B. Also known as Nisan, which corresponds to what we call May, uh, March and April, that time of year. And they were not to come before God empty handed because they were to bring animal sacrifices. And as Christians today, we should not come before God empty handed. Right. Look at somebody and say, don't come to God empty handed. No, 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 I'm not talking about making animal sacrifices since those are not part of the new covenant worship. But we are told to become living sacrifices. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and that acceptable and that perfect will of God. That's the word of God, y'all. Now, there are many sacrifices that we as Christians got to make in order to not be conformed to this world. The second feast was what we call the Feast of Harvest. The Feast of Weeks, or what we, is commonly known, what took place in on Acts chapter 2, was the day of Pentecost. That's what we call the Feast of Harvest. And this feast was used to celebrate the completion of what they called the barley harvest. And on this day, they did not work treating it as a Sabbath day. And according to Leviticus 23, 15 to 22, they would offer up leavened bread and animal sacrifices. And they also made what we call free will offerings during this time, according to Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse number 10. And this feast took place during the month of Savan, which corresponds with what we call May and June. Yeah. And it also said that this feast was in remembrance of the law that was given on Mount Sinai. Now, the third feast was called the Feast of the Ingathering, which is also called the Feast of what? Somebody know it. Tabernacles. Amen. This feast took place during the, Jew the Jewish month of Tishri, which covers parts of September, October. This feast would become a time of remembrance for the children of Israel. Um, Forty years of wandering in the wilderness and the protection that God gave to them during this time. Now, why do we need to know all of that? You need to know all of it for a reason. Now, all of these feasts we put into place so that the children of Israel would be reminded of the things that God had did for them. Y'all know that if we don't take time sometime and just set aside and get away from everything and just put our minds on what it is that God has done for us, that sometimes we'll find ourselves forgetting actually how good God has been to us, how much God has done for us. You ought to find yourself at some point all throughout the day, Lord, I thank you for what you have done for me. Lord, I thank you for making 
opening a way for me. Lord, I thank you for opening doors for me. Lord, I thank you for keeping from me things that I deserve, consistently giving me things that I do not deserve. You ought to find yourself in a place of praise so you'll never forget what the Lord did for you and not only what the Lord did for you, but where the Lord brought you from. So in Exodus chapter 23 and verse number 19, it says, The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. Don't bring me what you got left over. Come on now. And can I tell you, can I tell you, if we really want to be blessed, I learned that we got to put God first in everything. Before we do anything for ourselves, we got to consider God. Amen. Because do you know, I know all of us, we go to work, or you know, you go to work Monday through Friday, have you go, and, what, and whether it's every week or every two weeks, you know you got something coming mm-hmm. for the work that you have done. You look at, and if you don't get it, it's going to be some problem. Some tables going to get flipped, somebody going to get upset. If you don't have what it is that's supposed to be in your account, how you think God feel on a Sunday to Sunday basis when his account don't look like it's supposed to look? So don't bring what you got left over. Bring the first fruits of the first fruits of your crop into the house of the Lord. Now, when we're talking about this, the first fruits of any crop is always the what? The best. And not even in a monetary sense. But can I tell you that when you come to worship, that you ought not bring God half of a worship. But you ought to bring God your best worship. I know that, um, um, the, now the book of Malachi provides an excellent example of what not to give God. Uh, Malachi chapter 1, beginning at verse number 6, going to verse number 8. It says, a son honors his father, a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts to you, priests who despise my name. Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offered defiled food on my altar. But say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Will he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts. Now, when they offered an animal sacrifice, it was supposed to not be the animal that got one hoof missing, got an ear missing. You know, one of the ears got clipped off in a fight that he had last week. You were supposed to bring your best animal. Yeah, we had people here that were trying to get away with offering up something that was lame. Blind. Sick animals that would have most likely died on their way to the sacrifice. Church, we got to be careful that we don't come to God offering him leftovers. Because that would not be pleasing to him. Now let's, uh, Exodus, say our text chapter, verse, uh, chapter 23. Let's go to verses 20 and down to 23. He says, Behold, I sent an angel before you, to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your, good God Almighty, I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. Y'all let me tell you, God is a protector. God is a way, even when you may feel like you are in a place where you are just surrounded by so many things that can seemingly come in and destroy you, God is letting you know, I got your back. I don't just got your back, I got you on the side, I got you on the front, I got you on the bottom, I got you on the top. Any way that I can have you, I got you. Come on. Now the, the word angel, we know simply means messenger. And, and it can refer to an earthly messenger or a, or a heavenly messenger. 
Some would say that message, messenger being spoken of here was Moses. And others say that it was referring to a, a, a theophany, which we know is a pre-incarnate representation of Jesus Christ. Personally, I think it's the latter because God says this messenger has his name in him, which to me indicates that he is deity. He must be of God. Also, you will notice that he has the ability to forgive sins, which again is an attribute of what? God, of deity. The message is clear that if they will obey his voice, then God will take care of their enemies. Over and over again, you see, church, that God demands obedience. He demands obedience to his word. Beginning at verse number 24, he says, you shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage, nor be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all people to whom you come and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets, but God don't play, let me tell you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hittite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before you. Now, God has already called himself, according to the Ten Commandments that we went through two weeks ago, a jealous God. Back in Exodus chapter 20. And we see from this text that he doesn't want the children of Israel to have anything to do with these other gods. And they were to do what? Tear down anything and everything that had to do with their false gods. Now notice the great benefits they will receive if they will simply do what God commanded. He will take away their sickness. Even make it to where no women had miscarriages. He says he will call them all to live full lives. He will also be on your side and make it easy for you to defeat your enemies. Our last text for this evening, um, beginning at verse number 29 and verse number 33. He says, I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate yeah. and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before. We serve a strategic God, church. Yeah. Yeah. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you will inherit the land. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea to the Sea Philistia and from the desert to the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto you. Now church, here we see God's wonderful, what I call wisdom. Church, God got the power. If he snapped his finger right now and had the thought, y'all know we all drop dead right now. If he just had the thought for this entire world, with all the billions of inhabitants that it has on it. If God just decides right now for all of it to cease to exist, it will cease to exist. Yes, sir. That's just what kind of power God has. Yeah, amen. He did it slowly as they came to each enemy so that they could reap the most benefit from each location that they went to. And again, God warns them about serving their enemies false gods. I said that was the last text, but I got one more for you. Amen. <laughs> Exodus chapter 24, verses 3 through 8. It says, so Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. 
And all the people answered with one voice and said, oh, you know, someone wasn't telling the truth. They were just repeating what they heard. Uh -huh. All the words which the Lord has said will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who burnt, offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, uh -huh. and half of the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Yes. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it unto the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do, here it is, and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the first time, this is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to these words. Now, once again, church, we find that the children of Israel saying that we will keep all, the Lord, you said it, we're going to do it. We're going to do exactly what you said. Sound like us, right? Lord, I'm going to obey you, Lord. I'm going to do Lord, I, I tell you, we don't tell as many stories as we do at a watch night service. <laughs> oh, I'm going into a new year. Let me tell you, I ain't going to be lying no more when I go. And so uh, 12 o'clock hit, you call and tell <laughs> You know, um, you know, we, we, you know, Lord, oh, I'm going to the gym this year. I'm gonna get fit, Lord. You just give me the ability to do it, Lord. You ain't been over there yet, and here it is, August. <laughs> we, 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 you know. <laughs> Watch out. We, we are, and we have a habit of always saying that we're gonna do stuff, but it's a whole different church in saying that we're gonna do something and actually doing something. That's what we call lip service. Just saying that we're going to be about something, but we never get around to doing it. There was a man and Jesus was talking to him and he said, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. And he didn't know. He said, thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. You know, we walk around here sometimes thinking that we got all the time in the world to make decisions. We got all the time in the world to try to live for Jesus, to try to be a Christian. But it, it should put fear in our hearts on a week to week basis. We have people that stand up here and they send up prayer request cards. And you hear about people in their 20s, people in their 30s that, that are leaving this world, that are dying. Uh, people that are in potentially good health that are leaving this world, they're leaving. Let me tell you, you do not have as much time as you think that you got. Come on. Do you know that you are closer to your life's end right now than you were when you woke up this morning? That's right. So we ought to all be living our lives in such a way that we can bring glory to God. Moses wrote those words down and he builds an altar that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And he has these young men to come and offer an animal sacrifice to God. And most, if not all, of the covenants made under the Old Testament were sealed by what? Blood. In order for a new covenant to be brought into effect, there has to be the shedding of what? Innocent blood. Moses sprinkles the blood from the sacrifice that was made on the altar, and then he sprinkles it out on the people. Y'all be looking at me crazy. I come in here with some red stuff and just start slanging it out there, throwing it on you. Now, to go through such an experience should be forever remembered in their minds. And in a similar way, the new covenant was made by the shedding of the blood of Jesus. And I recognize something. Do you know why Abraham was not allowed to kill his son on that mountain. Because God was not about to allow Abraham to do on a mountain what Jesus would one day do on Mount Calvary. Right. Yeah. The shedding of his blood brought about the remission of sins. We know that before Jesus came, before Jesus died, before Jesus gave his life, there was separation between man and God. We read about how when Jesus died, when he gave up his life, 
that it says that away in the temple, it talked about how it had the, tent, the, 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 the sheet that was in the temple, the veil, how it had been rent from the top to the bottom. And it let us know that there was therefore no more separation between God and man. And I'm glad in the day that we live in as much sin and stuff that we get into, amen, somebody, that we have a God that we can go to and we can admit our wrongdoing. We can admit our sin and we can ask God to forgive us and to give us another opportunity and to bring us back into fellowship with him. Since we do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear, let's live every day of our lives in service of Jesus. Let's live every day of our lives trying to serve him. No, you ain't going to do right all the time, but even when you recognize that you're not doing right, get back up and try that thing again. And I tell you, if you put forth your best effort, we serve a God that will meet you in the road and he'll help you to get to where you need to be. Don't just sit there on the bench just thinking God just going to come pick you up, take you to where you need to be, pack your lunch, pack your suitcase, all of that. You got to work out for yourself, church. You got to save yourself. You got to live for yourself. You got to be saved for yourself. So that one of these days, when God shall call, and all men have to answer. Because you know what? All of us, you know, you make a hair appointment, you make a dentist appointment, and other appointments that you got to go to, and just say you want to go fishing you know, or something, you know? And, and you say, well, I ain't going to be able to make it to the appointment. You know, I ain't going to be able to make it. You can call in and you can reschedule it, but all of us got an appointment. Thing is, you don't even know when it's scheduled. That's right. And you ain't going to be there. But I can tell you what, you ain't going to miss it. All of us got an appointment that we have to keep one of these days. And as a child of God, it ought not put fear in your heart, but it ought to put joy down in your soul. Because we know that the scripture says that after this earthly house, this tablet of this earthly house has been destroyed, that we have a building not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's why we're here. That's why we're serving. That's why we're worshiping. So that one of these days when time and eternity shall be no more, that we'll be go to live with Jesus forever in eternity in heaven. What a joyous and what a wonderful day it shall be. My brother, my sister, maybe you're here on this afternoon, maybe you're watching with us, and you at this time are an alien sinner distant from God. You do not have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have not had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You are not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. We beckon, we plead with you. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing at another time. Today that you hear his voice, the Bible says, do not harden your heart. You come by hearing his word, believe in the same, repent of your sins. Confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. And the Lord himself says that he'll add you to his body. Remain faithful unto death. And he'll give you a crown of life. They'll never, never fade away. If you're here, maybe you're watching, you're standing in the need of prayer. You have that opportunity to request prayer at this time. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. Sounds like music in my ear, the sweet. 